Hey, I'm Jessie, and thanks for joining me for another That's My Story throwback episode. I've got a cold at the moment, so sorry if I sound a bit gross. One thing that always makes me feel better, though, is seeing my friends. So it's handy that today's episode is all about friendships. However, it's not all BFFs. Some of these stories show that friendships sometimes come with betrayal and don't last forever. These stories should make you appreciate your friends even more. The first one is about Oliver and his best friend Seb, who was hiding a big secret. Figure it out later. That day, when Seb came over, we had such a great time. When we were done with the movies, my mom called us to have dinner. Seb loved everything he ate and complimented my mom on each dish. My mom was embarrassed since she wasn't used to receiving so much praise. I thought that Seb was just being overly polite that day. But it turned out there was a heartbreaking reason why he was acting that way, which I would learn about later. As we got closer, Seb started coming to our place more often. Our routine was the same. First we would watch a movie, then we would eat. We got used to Seb loving everything he was eating and showering my mom with compliments. Around that time, I realized something. Seb never talked about his family. He never invited me to his place either. Normally, of course, he wouldn't have to talk about his family. But now he was my best friend and he came over to our place so often that he was almost like a member of my family. And I didn't know anything about his private life. My dad is a mechanic. Seb and I went to visit his workshop a couple of times. But what did Seb's dad do? I had no idea. One morning, the bus I was taking to school broke down. I decided to walk because I was only three stops away. I took a shortcut to get there faster. As I was walking down an alley, I saw a gigantic SUV with tinted windows parked by the road. I'm into cars since my dad is a mechanic. I knew this brand. They made custom-designed luxury SUVs. As I was standing there and staring at the car, the front door opened. A driver wearing a suit and tie stepped out and opened the rear door. Out came Seb, looking like he was still half asleep. Our eyes met. I took one look at the SUV and then at Seb. He was pretty shocked to see me too. You caught me. Let's walk so we're not late. We can talk on the way, he said. I was totally surprised by what Seb was telling me. His father was a famous jewelry designer. They have jewelry stores in many countries. But why was he hiding the fact that his family was rich? I really wanted to know, but I couldn't ask him because he clearly didn't want to talk about it. What would you do if you found out your best friend was rich? Watch the full video to see when Oliver visited Seb's mansion for the first time. Mofox can totally relate to this story as their BFF is super rich too, and even has his own movie theatre. BTEC says how we've got to be appreciative of what we have, and Nita says that money can't buy happiness. Wow, we all really learned some life lessons watching that one. Love it! Next up is a story about best friends Riley and Gianna, who both had rich dads, until Riley's became bankrupt. Gianna then started acting differently towards her. Let's see what happened. When I went to Gianna's on Saturday, I saw that she'd invited two other friends. I'd never met them before. Like we did at every slumber party, we were chatting over milk and cookies before we went to bed. Gianna looked at me and said, Riley, I know this might upset you, but I want to ask Jasmine and Melissa about this for your sake. I wasn't sure what Gianna was talking about. She turned to the other girls. Imagine you wake up tomorrow morning and your dad says, we've lost all our money. We're moving to a tiny apartment with used furniture. Would you tell your dad? Dear daddy, that's awesome news. Let's move. Or would you confront your dad about it? I was baffled. Why had Gianna brought this up? And why would I talk about my private life with people whom I just met? Before the girls could say anything, I said, Gianna, you're out of line. Why does this bother you so much? She said, because you need to accept that I'm right. It makes me sad to see you living poor. Your dad's responsible for it, but you can't see it. And you're still protecting him. Whoa. What would you do if you were in Riley's shoes? Watch the whole video to learn the reason behind Gianna's behaviour, and to see whether or not they became friends again. Kimberly says that Riley has a good heart. Just Vixen says we should never insult a father who loves their child more than money. And Eugene thinks that friendship is magic and unites everyone. As always, thanks so much for sharing your comments. I love reading them. If you like the movie E.T., then you'll enjoy this next story. 
Robin found a strange looking capsule and brought it home. Let's see what happened when it finally opened. That night, I had absolutely confusing dreams in which a strange being with a large eye appeared. It had a gelatinous body and some sort of antennae. In the dream, I thought the weird thing with its slimy body was pretty creepy and gross. When my parents left to play tennis on Sunday morning, I was still sitting at the table when I suddenly noticed something in the corner of my eye. Easy, easy, it's all right, I guess I said to myself, and looked at my left shoulder. There it was, looking the same as in my dream. The thing rolled over my arm onto the table and looked at me. Don't panic now, I thought in panic, and calm down, calm down. I'm your friend, I heard inside me, vibrating strangely. It's not me at all. It's you saying that, isn't it? I asked. Again, I heard that vibrating voice inside me saying, Yes, you were incredibly quick to realize this for a human. Who are you? I asked out loud. I'm sorry. I heard the voice inside me. I don't mean to be arrogant. Please don't be afraid. No, I'm not. But who are you? What are you doing here? What is this all about? I said, somewhat confused. Would you stop talking? The little thing asked me. I understand you anyway. Your thoughts and speech are getting pretty confusing, which makes it hard for me to understand it all. Unbelievable, I thought. But it was all so completely crazy, I didn't wonder at all. I tried, but believe me, it's hard to control your thoughts. I'm from a galaxy not too far away. But you humans may not know that yet. Anyway, I was here several centuries ago and now I want to find out how far you have evolved. I am what is called a scientist. Or an explorer. I have no name or gender, but call me Ammo. A little reference to amorphous. That suits my form better, I think. Would you like an alien friend? Could you keep it a secret? Manu thinks that the alien is super cute. Watch the full episode to find out why Iris thinks it's such a good alien. This next story is about Lucy, who suspects someone in her friendship group is stealing. Let's see how reading someone's diary might actually help get someone out of big trouble. As if that weren't enough, we also love having slumber parties whenever we can. Emily doesn't have her own room, so we have them at either my place or Jasmine's. By the way, Emily gets financial aid. Unfortunately, her family is not doing so well. Of course, this doesn't stop us from being good friends, but I can feel that Emily is not too happy about not being able to host a party at her house. We were at my place when it all started. My parents had gone to our summer home, so we had the whole house to ourselves. We had so much fun doing the silliest things all night. We sat around in my room and talked until really late. Then Jasmine went to sleep in the living room, and Emily and I slept in my room. In the morning, I went into my bathroom. I put on my contact lenses. The night before, I'd put my ring right next to the lenses, but I realized it wasn't there anymore. I was sure I put it there. I looked around, but I couldn't find it. I was really upset because my mother had her own jeweler make this ring for my 15th birthday. I'm sure it's very expensive, but I didn't care about the money. It had huge sentimental value to me. I got dressed and went downstairs. Jasmine and Emily were making breakfast. I was just about to say that I couldn't find my ring, but I stopped. Emily slept in my room that night. In the morning, she used the bathroom before me. Emily is my best friend. It would never occur to me to suspect her. But if I said something, she might have misunderstood. That's why I didn't say anything. Do you think Emily was right to read Jasmine's diary? Has anybody ever read your diary before? Rachel thinks that it was a clever plan, but doesn't believe that Jasmine meant to steal. Jamesa does not agree, she says she could never forgive her and thinks that Jasmine needs serious help. This final story is about love and friendship. Dylan is in love with his best friend Jason's girlfriend Hazel. After they break up, Hazel gives Dylan an ultimatum that they can date if he gets Jason's blessing. Let's watch the moment he asks for it. At first, I couldn't find the courage, but Hazel was very clear so I didn't really have a choice. 
I need to talk to you about something important, I said to Jason. I opened up about my feelings for Hazel. I told him that I felt really bad, but that I couldn't help it. And then I let him know about what Hazel and I talked about. He was obviously shocked. You're joking, right? Are you asking for my permission? He asked. I looked away. He sprang up. He called me a jerk and punched me. I didn't do anything to defend myself because he was right. He left without another word. I didn't care about losing him or even the punch. The problem was Jason wasn't okay with the whole thing. That meant Hazel's condition hadn't been met. So I had now lost my best friend as well as the girl that I'm in love with. The next morning, I saw a text from Jason when I woke up. Dude, Hazel and I weren't happy, but maybe you'll be happy with her. Follow your heart, he wrote. I was ashamed, but also happy. I was so proud of my friend, but also sad for him. I met up with Hazel. She got really emotional when I showed her the text. She hugged me and put her head on my shoulder. We didn't mention it again for the rest of the day. I thought the coming days would be like a dream, but they weren't. I started dealing with feelings that I didn't anticipate. Like, if we were holding hands, I would suddenly imagine her holding hands with Jason and I would pull away. For example, when Hazel wanted to go somewhere, I would ask her, have you been there with Jason? If she were to say something romantic, I would think, did she say this to Jason too? She knew what was going on. She kept telling me that Jason was in the past now. But I couldn't really enjoy any of our time together with this stuff constantly on my mind. Jason and I were still hanging out, by the way. We tried to act like nothing had happened, but things were a bit different. Yet, I valued our friendship now more because he had shown me that he put my happiness above his. Hmm, should Dylan have kept it to himself and not taken his feelings any further? If you were in Jason's shoes, would you have been able to stay best friends? Red Light says to never dump your best friend for a girl you love, then expect them to still be there for you after you break up. Leviathan has been in a similar situation, but never acted upon it as their friendship was too important to them. You can find links to all of today's full stories in the description or iCards. Thanks for hanging out with me for another throwback episode. I'll see you next time for even more stories. And remember to subscribe so you never miss out on a new upload. That was our stories!